We are in front of Kilroy's on Kirkwood, where Lauren Spear partied for the majority of the night two years ago on the night that she disappeared. Today, her parents are trying to gather enough evidence in order to convict the two men that were last seen with her on June 3rd, 2011. Jason Rossenbaum, Corey Rossman, and Michael Beth are the last known people who spent the evening with Lauren Spear on the night of her disappearance. She was reported last seen by Rossenbaum after she left his apartment at the intersection of 11th Street and College Avenue. She was highly intoxicated and had consumed cocaine and other types of drugs, on top of having a rare heart condition called Long QT Syndrome. Greg Garrison, who is the attorney for Michael Beth, explained she walked out of a building and then disappeared. I think most folks know the sad story. This gal got pretty drunked up and just disappeared. And I mean disappeared off planet Earth. No one knows anything. There's not a hint. There's not a fingerprint. There's not a drop of blood. There's not a hair sample. There's nothing. Um, she just walked out of a building at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and nobody ever saw her again. As of this past December, Michael Beth is now dismissed from the case. He was the roommate of Rossman and was tied into the lawsuit for allowing Lauren to come into his apartment on the night of her disappearance. Garrison filed a new motion for Beth, stating her two-year disappearance cannot declare that she is dead. Therefore, he was not able to be sued for wrongful death. The lawsuit seeks to impose damages on them, pay damages because of her assumed, presumed wrongful death. Well, she's just been gone. She's not been killed that we know of, and the rule in Indiana is seven years. She is assumed still to be alive, until there's some kind, unless there's some kind of overwhelming evidence for a period of seven years, after which time she can be declared dead. That's like for life insurance purposes and that kind of thing. But the leap that the case tries to, that the plaintiffs try to make is that because she's disappeared and we don't know what happened to her, therefore we can presume, which we cannot under the law, that she's dead. And if she's dead, then she died because they didn't take good care of her and the court didn't buy that. Within the past six months, Lauren's parents requested both Jason Rossenbaum and Corey Rossman's phone and academic records, spanning 134 days before and after June 3, 2011. But the judge felt it was too broad of a request and it was denied. Garrison believes their academic records are no one's business, but Jillian Young, a recent graduate at Indiana University, feels differently. Because I think it's a very special case, and this, this town is really strange. The uh, Laura Palmer, do you know the Twin Peaks? Yeah. The show Twin Peaks, there's some similarity between the two, and it's, this town is already filled with college students. It's really strange, and I think it's, a, it's really special, so the truth has to be told to everyone, and they're to forbid, like, in the future, missing students, and I just think it's really complex, and I think it's supposed to be... Um, the truth should be reviewed, so I think in this case, it should be, the messages should be um, investigate, investigated by the people that are in the police department. As of today, Lauren's parents are continuing to try and sue both Jason Ross and Bob and Corey Rossman for wrongful death. The civil suit accuses the men of negligence because they supplied 20-year-old Spear at the time with alcohol and did not make sure she returned to her apartment safely. Today is the three-year anniversary of Lauren Spear's disappearance, and one thing is for certain. Regardless of the rumors and allegations, she did disappear. No evidence has come to surface and no one has confessed to any knowledge of what happened to her that night. If you have any information in regards to the case, contact 812-339-4477. Remember, anything small could be big.